Hi, everybody. I'm going to talk about something today that's going to rock your world on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. And you know how big tech wants to make sure that they censor us conservatives. So do me a favor. I want you to subscribe, share, and like this program right now because this is what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about can a well-versed Democrat also be a Christian? That's our topic today on the Vince Everett Ellison Show. All right, let's get this thing started. Can you be a well-versed Democrat and be a Christian? That is the question. And it's a good question. And I, I, I say well-versed because there are a lot of people who are, are Democrats that don't really know what the Democrat Party stands for. And, and, and you know, that's a problem. You know, they hide a lot of what they do. They've hidden it for years. People say Democrat Party is for the poor people. They want to help the needy. They want to help the migrants. No, they don't. So, the, but the well-versed Democrat knows everything that the Democratic Party stands for, and that's the Democratic Party leadership. And you know what I've called them? I've called the Democratic leadership a cabal of perverts, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots. That's how I see them. I call them perverts because they want to transition children, want to cut off the breasts of little girls and call them little boys, want to castrate little boys, call them little girls. I call them psychopaths because they want to murder everybody. They want to, uh, you know, abortion until the knife them off. Uh, some of them even talk about abortion after the child is born. Yeah. And I'm calling liars, but that's self-evident, right? You know, they lie about everything. And anti-Christian bigots. That's the one we're talking about today. Is the Democrat Party leadership and the people that run the party and the people that are close to the party, are they anti-Christian bigots? Are they hostile to religion? If they're hostile to religion, they can't be Christians. How can you be a Christian and be hostile to religion? Well, let's talk about it. Let's start with the beginning of the country, what America was founded on. Before 1776, we were controlled by a king, king of England, King George. He said, I run everything. I'm God. Y'all do what I say. He started trampling on the Americans' rights, and they got mad at him and said, we are going to separate from you. George says, no, you cannot separate from me. I'm king. I'm sovereign. We said to George, no, we will separate from you because we do not recognize your sovereignty over us. Our sovereignty, the, the sovereignty over us, comes from God. These rights are called unalienable rights, rights that come from God. Now, listen to me when I say this. Democrat Party is hostile to religion, but our founding documents say that our rights come from God. See where I'm going here? They're hostile to religion, but our rights come from God. These rights are called unalienable rights. According to John Locke in his second, second treaties of government, this is where Thomas Jefferson got this from, an unalienable right is a right given to you by God. They are irrevocable, non-transferable, and unsellable. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom to assembly. All of these rights are unalienable. The right to keep and bear arms and defend yourself. They are unalienable rights. Government's job is to help you protect these rights. They are not supposed to touch them or keep you from them. If so, according to our declaration, our job is to take that government, overthrow it, and replace it with a government that will help secure these unalienable rights. Got me? These rights come from God. The whole formation of our country says that our rights come from God. All right. Now, the Democratic Party comes up. And they say, hmm, we're going to start violating these unalienable rights. Well, first thing they did was they took slaves, took away the right for you to be free. Yeah. We're going to take it from you. You can't be free. We're going to beat you. We're going to kill you. We're going to take away your right to life. Yeah, we can kill you when you want to. We can steal, we can take things from you when we want to. So they violated the whole concept of this country at the beginning of it. 
they took slaves. Then they started the Civil War to keep their slaves and they committed wholesale murder again. Then they did Jim Crow again. And now they're doing these other things. But they've always been this way, y'all. So the question is, again, with the wholesale murder of children, with the theft, with the anger and the covetousness, can you be a well-versed Democrat, the people that run this party, and still be a Christian? Well, let me tell you how far this thing goes back. We talk about the Nazis, right? That the Nazis were the evilest people in the history of the world. And we agree. Adolf Hitler and the Nazis killing 6 million Jews. Starting World War II, they killed close to 60 million people. They were horrible people. But you know who the Nazis got their ideology from? You guessed it. The Democrat Party. In my best-selling book here, 25 Lies. I want to read to you what I wrote about how the Nazis and the Democrats came together as one crew. And this is why you have to buy this book because it explains it so well. It says, it is universally agreed that the National Socialist German Workers' Party, the Nazis, is also one of the vilest and evilest political organizations in the world. How can the Nazi party be evil and the Democratic Party not be? In, su in two separate discussions, the first on history, Dot com, Yale professor James Q. Whitman and USC professor Wolf Garner talked about the racism, the racism in the Democrat Party, Jim Crow South, and Nazi Germany were compared and analyzed. In an effort to help you understand how egregious this whitewashing of history has been, in each statement where the author mistakenly cites America as a racist uh, 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 party, put Democrat Party. So, Mr. Whitman writes, America, the Democratic Party in America, in the early 20th century was the leading racist jurisdiction in the world. Nazi lawyers, as a result, were interested in, looked very closely at, and ultimately influenced by American Democrat Party race law. The Democrat Party racial classification law was much harsher than anything the Nazis themselves were willing to introduce in Germany. In his movie, Death of a Nation, Dinesh D'Souza makes this same observation. He said, the Nazi Nuremberg laws were directly modeled on the segregation laws of the Democratic Party. Every segregation law was passed by a Democrat legislature, signed by a Democratic governor, and enforced by Democrat officials. As the Democrat one-drop rule, as for the Democrat one-drop rule, the Nazis found it too racist even for them. Becky Little on March 20th, 2019, in a piece for History.com wrote, when the Nazis set out to legally disenfran disenfranchise and discriminate against Jewish citizens, they weren't just coming up with ideas out of thin air. In particular, Nazis admired the Jim Crow era Democrat Party laws that discriminated against black Americans and segregated them from white Americans. The Nazis learned from the Democrats. Get 25 lies. Read more about it. It'll blow your mind. So the evilest organization in the world came to America to learn from the Democrat Party. They wanted to treat Jews the way Democrats treated black people. And they came to America to understand how they did it. And so the Democrats told the Nazis that first you got to determine what a Jew is, like we determined what a black person was. And they said, how'd you do it? They said, well, if, 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 if one in 16 of their great, great, great grandparents, if one, of the, one in 16 was black, that person is considered black. The Jews thought that, the, 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 the Nazis thought that was too racist. And they said, well, we'll make uh, just one of the grandparents, four grandparents. If one of those are a Jew, then we'll say it's a Jew. The Democrats say 116. So the person can walk around looking basically white. And they say, if he, if, 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 of, of his, of, of his, 
great, 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 great grandparents, if one of them is black, he's considered a black person. Nazis say that was too racist. Well, in 1962, there was a Supreme Court case called Engel versus Vitale. This Supreme Court case kicked prayer out of school. Ever since that Supreme Court case, we've been trying to pass an amendment to the Constitution allowing prayer in schools. This amendment says, nothing in this Constitution shall be construed to prohibit individuals or group prayer in public schools or other public institutions. It would only say no person shall be required by the U.S. or any state to participate in prayer. Just that simple. If you want to pray, you can. If you don't want to pray, you don't have to. The Democrats have been blocking that amendment ever since. Will not let it pass. They blocked it ever since. Question, is the Democratic Party hostile to religion? Of course they are. You know, when you talk about this party and what describes it, it's amazing when you read our Bible and it talks about how a good Christian should act. They call it the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit consist of, they talk about it in Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruits of the Spirit are, are love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. <laughs> Democrats don't have any of that. Love, joy, no justice, no peace. Peace, no justice, no peace. Forbearance, I want my reparations. Kindness, I'm going to boycott and shut you down if you don't give me what I want. Goodness, Lord have mercy. Go to the ghettos and see how much goodness you find. Faithfulness, we can't stand America. Burn, baby, burn. Gentleness, burn, baby, burn, <laughs> and self-control. Drinking 40s, smoking blunts. Yeah, go to any ghetto. Sex, violence, materialism, the hip-hop culture. You consider that self-control? No. Again, y'all, we're talking about can you be a well-versed Democrat? I mean, a Democrat that knows what's going on. Now, you know what? I grew up in the black community. Everybody I met, from the doctor that birthed me to the undertaker that was burying people, if you were black, you were a Democrat. Preacher was a Democrat. Shopkeeper was a Democrat. School teachers were a Democrat. All of them. And I always wondered why. And of course, you've, you've heard me talk about Stockholm Syndrome. How the Democrat Party, when the Republicans came down, they virtually killed all of them. They would hang you from a tree. They beat you to death if you said you were a Republican. And so because of that, Stockholm Syndrome set in. And Black people started identifying with their master. This party that had slaves, this party that had the Ku Klux Klan, this party that would throw dynamite in churches and blow up four little girls in Sunday school, this party that castrated, maimed, mutilated, and today has abortion clinics in every ghetto, will not allow you to pray anywhere where there's any type of government, will disarm you in a war zone, will allow fentanyl and drugs across the border. It still exists still doing the same thing, still bastardizing Christianity. And this is how they're split. They haven't destroyed Christianity or made it illegal. They've taken it and they've started teaching a false Christianity. During the civil rights movement, they allowed all these white liberals to get into the black church and turn the church into an arm of the Democrat Party. Now, again, there is no black church. That's an oxymoron. Black church don't exist. There's only one church, the Church of Jesus Christ. There's no black church, there's no white church, there's no red church, there's no green church. There's only one church, the Church of Jesus Christ. But that's what they did. 
They called it the black church, which shows you that something was wrong right then. So they allowed these leaders, these, these um, white Democrats to come in, right? Well, these white liberals to come in. Atheists, Marxists, dopeheads, weirdos, perverts, and, and they didn't bring them into the church to save them, to baptize them, to bring them to Christ. So because they didn't save these people, these people infiltrated and polluted the church. And now the black church is mostly apostate. It's mostly a Sunday morning disco fashion show. And they started paying the black preacher to turn the black church into the political arm of the Democratic Party. So now most black preachers support abortion, which is against the laws of God. They support the LGBTQ thing that's against the laws of God. They support disarming people in war zones against the laws of God, destroying the family. This is who they are. Yet they say that they're upholding the laws of Jesus Christ. And it's a lie. So when you look at what our Bible says about the things that God hates, Proverbs um, 6, 16 through 19 says, and this describes the Democrat Party plainly for me, the things that God hates. He hates a proud look. Mm, they walk around here strutting, acting like they've done something in the black community. Walking through ghettos, riding around in Cadillacs and riding around in Mercedes and the people are living like slaves. But they walk around in their, their proud look, the NAACP, the Black Caucus, the Democrat Party. A lying tongue. Well, that speaks for itself. We're going to run on a woman's right to choose. You have no right to tell me what to do with my body says these Democratic women. Well, ain't nobody trying to tell you what to do with your body. We're trying to tell you what to do with the baby. Oops, I'm not supposed to say that. I'm not supposed to speak on that issue. We're not trying to make abortion so much illegal. We're trying to make it unthinkable. If you make it unthinkable, you don't have to worry about it being illegal. Nobody wants to be aborted and nobody wants to have an abortion. And we should start there. But these Democrats want to sexualize your children. Want to teach them to have sex before they're seven or eight years old. That's them. They want to bring drag queens in the schools and have them shake their behinds in the children's faces. That's them. And then when the child ended up pregnant at 14, 15, 16 years old, they said, wait, wait, what happened? I don't know how that happened. Lord have mercy. It's got to be them conservatives or those Republicans. Hip-hop music. Sex, violence, and materialism. But then they want to say it's the conservatives. So God hates a proud look. He hates a lying tongue. Hands that shed innocent blood. Wow. The abortion industry really comes to mind there, doesn't it? Hands that shed innocent blood. He hates it. A heart that devises wicked imaginations. Well, well, well. Castrating little boys, government sex means little girls, pornography, mm -hmm. making drugs legal. Yeah. Number five, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Lord have mercy. Feet that be swift in running to mission. They'll find the problem. Start fighting in the street, raising hell in the street, boycotting, looking for stuff, looking for trouble. That's them. A false witness that speaketh lies. Number six. Well, you know, that speaks for itself. How you know a Democrat's lying? His lips are moving. And number seven. He that sows discord among his brothers.
They tell black Christians that white Christians hate them. They tell white Christians that black Christians hate them. No justice, no peace. Boycott, stalking, aggravating people, burning down buildings, fighting the police, defunding the police, riots. That's them. He that sows discord amongst his brothers. Read Proverbs 6, 16 and 19. It's like Solomon wrote a script to the Democratic Party, a complete description of them. But that's who they are. Let's look at our Ten Commandments and see how they fare with that. First commandment, thou shalt have no other God before me. Well, they want government to be your God, so that's that on that. You shall have no graven images. Well, they want you to salute them. You cannot use God's name in vain, number three. Well, you know, they cuss all the time. Four-letter words, profanity, that's them. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. They don't even understand what the Sabbath day is. They're the reason why everything, I remember when I was a boy, everything was closed on Sunday. Well, like people had to go to church. The Democratic Party don't want you in church. They want you at the liquor store. They want you at street, they want you at strip, strip, strip club. They want you out in the street march. Number five, honor thy father and thy mother. No, not the Democrat Party. They have told us now that the children belong to them. The father and the mother are only conduits of the state. They say, we decide the education of your children. The parents say, I'm going to take my child to another school, another private school. No, that child is going to stay here, and we're going to teach this child what we want to teach it. Well, what if I want my child to learn this? That's your problem, parent. That child belongs to the state. They've said as much, y'all. I tell you what, if you don't think that child belongs to a public educational system, try to come in and take that child out there at school during school time without the, without the school's permission. See if they can't tell you no. Try to come in that school and just walk in your classroom and grab your child and see what happens. You'll see who runs the show then. Thou shalt not kill. Number six. Ha! The Democratic Party is responsible for 100 million murders here in the United States of America alone since its inception in 1800. 65 million abortions, a million in the Civil War. No telling how many slaves that they murdered between 1800 and 1860. So I say every slave that they had and that died in their, that ca captivity, they're responsible for their death. So you got tens of millions there. In the Jim Crow era, they were just killing black people. Like, you know, it was slaughter, good times. Hunt them down. Ku Klux Klan, red shirts, just killing people. And even now, with all those migrants that are coming off the border and dying, the fentanyl deaths here in America, all of that lays at their feet. They don't care. Thou shalt not kill. They laugh at that. A psychotic has to kill. It's in his nature. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, you know, you got a bunch of perverts. What can you do with that? Perverts don't just commit adultery. They commit all manner of sex sins. That's who they are. Thou should not bear false witness against your neighbor. <laughs> they wake up, they lying. They go to sleep, they're lying. When they dream while they're sleeping, they're lying. They cannot resist lying. That's what they do. So number nine, cancel that one. Yeah, they bear a lot of false witness against their neighbor. And then number 10, thou shalt not covet. That's pretty interesting because he said thou shalt not cover your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, nothing of your neighbor. And the whole concept of social justice is coveting. I want what you have. And if you don't give it to me, I'm going to take it. It's mine. Give me what I want. I want your money. I want your car. I want your food. I want, my rep I want reparations for work that my ancestor did 150 years ago. I want to eat a hamburger beside you, whether you want me to or not. I want to attend your school, whether you want me to or not. I want to live beside you, whether you want me to or not. It's me, 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 me. I want what you have. And if not, I'm going to use the government 
to take it from you and give it to me. Thou shalt not covet. But they've really blown that one out the water. You know, and when you think about these people, you think about the opposite side, right? I mean, how are you supposed to be? How does God want you to be? If he don't want you to be like this, how does he want you to be? He's given you the Ten Commandments to tell you how to act. And the Democratic Party breaks all of those. He's told you in Proverbs the things that he hates. And the Democratic Party mirrors all of those. But then he talks about the seven virtues and the seven vices. Seven virtues. One is prudence. What is prudence? Being careful. Democrats are careless. That's why all those eight million immigrants come over here, man. That's why they let the fentanyl come over. That's why they abort all the children. This is why their neighborhoods are in such ill repair. Up in Portland, they made drugs legal. And they are regretting that right now. People just dying on the streets, fentanyl overdoses, drug overdoses in Portland. Now they want to have a state of emergency to try to get the drugs out. How could you not see that if you made drugs illegal, I mean legal, more people were going to die from drug overdoses? They knew it. That's what psychopaths do. Careful. We want to fund the police. And then the snatch and grabs started. In the food deserts started. And the stores started moving out because they couldn't keep the robbers and the thieves out. We're going to say that if you rob less than $1,000, we're, we're, we're not going to arrest you for it. And people just started walking in stores and taking things out. Is that prudent? Is that careful? Of course not. Another virtue is justice. Democrats don't want justice. They want equality. What's the difference between justice and equality? Make it real simple for you. This is equality. A 90-year-old woman weighing 120 pounds is here. And I'm here. A man that weighs 180 pounds hits the old lady. She pulls out her revolver and shoots the guy. The same guy hits me. 180 pounds. I'm 225 pounds. He hits me, knocks me down. I'll pull out my revolver and shoot the same guy. According to equality, she and I are supposed to get the same sentence. If I get a life sentence for shooting this guy because, I mean, he's smaller than me, I'm bigger and stronger than him, she should also. Equality also dictates that since she shot the guy because she was old and feeble and he was bigger than her, she should go home and not be charged. Equality dictates that the same should happen to me even though I outweigh the guy by 45 pounds, and I'm bigger and stronger. This is justice. Same scenario. Guy hits the old lady, she shoots him. She goes home. Why? That's justice. He hits me, I shoot him, I go to jail. That's justice. It's not equality. We are equal under the law, but we are not equal. Justice is law tempered with mercy. We seek justice as Christians. We do not seek equality. That's one of the seven virtues, justice. Another one is temperance. What is temperance? It's restraint. Restraint. Not drinking too much. Not eating too much. Uh, not watching too much TV, not playing too many video games. Temperance, controlling yourself. Do Democrats have temperance? If it feels good, do it. Smoke as many blunts as you want. Drink as much as you want. Have as much sex as you want. Do whatever you want. We do not care. No temperance whatsoever. 
That's the Democrat Party, and they are against one of the, they're against the seven virtues that God set up for us. Temperance is an awesome virtue. It's self-control. They don't have it. All Christians do. One of the other seven virtues is fortitude. What is fortitude? Strong mind. It means doing what you have to do, even if you don't want to. It means getting up in the morning time and going to work at five in the morning when it's 20, 20 degrees outside. It, it's staying late. It's doing your homework. It's keeping your body in shape. It's, having, it, it's being able to say no to temptation. When somebody's coming up to you trying to get you to do something that's wrong, and you say, no, I'm not going to do that. That's fortitude. Democrats have fortitude? You been to a ghetto lately? Graffiti. Garbage. When you put it, garbage can be right there. Throw it on the floor. Just throw it on the ground. No restraint. Cursing, smoking, whatever vice you want, they have it. And the Democrats try to justify them all. Hope. It's another one of the virtues. I think we know what hope is. Looking forward to tomorrow. Believing it's going to be better. Having a good feeling about what's coming. Oh, not the Democrats. America's a terrible country. Racism everywhere. They're going to kill us all. They're going to take everything you got. Ain't no need to try. You're black, you're poor, the country is racist. Just sit there on the front porch and do nothing. Yeah, that's them. The last of the seven virtues is charity. The Democrats ain't going to give you nothing but government money. They're going to steal from you and give it to them. That's not charity. Charity is from one person to the other. Charity is me going in my pocket, helping you out. Charity is me taking my time and voluntarily spending it with you or helping you do something. Charity is you owing me owing you or you owing me something and I say, no, brother, keep it. That's okay. Charity is being kind. It's opening the door for somebody, going out of your way for somebody. That's charity. Charity isn't a government handout because government takes it from you with a gun. Before your check comes, like Marvin Gaye said, before we see it, you take it. it makes me want to holler the way they do my life. Yeah, money, we make it. Before we see it, you take it. So that's not charity. No, that's extortion. Give me that money. I'm going to blow your brains out. Well, why you want it? Government? government, So I can buy votes with it. Give it here. You got to give it up. So those are the seven virtues. None of the Democrat Party has. Prudence, justice, temperance, fortitude, faith, hope, and charity. I'm showing you they are an anti-Christian party. And they know it. I remember the time, oh, wow, I think it was the 2012 Democrat convention where they found out that God was not in the platform. People started getting mad about it. And they had to have a quorum call and had to get a voice vote at the convention to see if God would be put in the platform. Mayor of Los Angeles got up there and asked for the yeas and nays. Should God be put in the platform? Everybody said, nay! And the guy was caught off guard. And he gave the vote again. And they, go, they, they screamed louder, nay! And he looked behind the curtain and said, what do I do? And he said, the yeas have it. And walked off stage. <laughs> they are a godless party, y'all. You know, when you look at the um, seven vices, it's all the Democrat Party. Pride, greed, wrath, envy. Oh, Lord, envy. Lust. Oh, Lord, lust. <laughs> gluttony. Oh, Lord, gluttony. And sloth. Whoa, just sitting on the porch. What I'm saying? Smoking fun and smoking blunts. Watching Jerry Springer. <laughs> That's your Democrat Party. Join the party, y'all. <laughs> That's what you're going to get. Again, look at it. The vices versus versus the virtues. Anti-Christian party. Can you go to heaven supporting this stuff? I say not. So, in closing, the question. Can you be a well-versed Democrat 
and be a Christian? Answer, hell no. It is impossible. Can a man serve two masters? Jesus Christ said no. He said, you'll love one and, hurt and hate the other. So if one master is telling you to kill children, castrate little boys, cut off the breasts of little girls, and the other one is saying, no, love them, nurture them, take care of them. Because Jesus Christ said, if anyone harms one of these little ones, it's better that a millstone be tied around their neck and they be thrown into the sea. And they're saying, let's kill as many as we can. And the ones that we don't kill, let's make sure that we castrate them and let's make sure we mess their minds up. Everyone that we don't kill, let's make sure that they don't get a good education. Let's make sure we destroy their family. Let's make sure we beat them down. Yeah. Can a man serve two masters? When one says, thou shalt not covet. And the other one says, and thou shalt not, and, 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 and not to envy. And the other one says, go out there and say, no justice, no peace until you give me free health care. Until you give me free food, free housing, free phone. Until you forgive my college loan. Until you allow me to go into any area that I want to and invade the space of anybody that I please for any reason that I want to. Yeah, until you allow demented men to go into the bathroom with little girls and demented men to participate in sports with little girls. Have demented men go in and dance in front of children in grammar school. Which master are you going to serve? That's the question. So I'm trying to teach you, and everybody that sees this today or tonight or whenever you're watching it, I've just given you a soliloquy on who the Democrat Party is. Check it out for yourself. You will see that they are an anti-Christian party. They are anti-religious party. They have tried everything that they can. They had an Equality Act that said uh, they were going to take the tax exemption away from churches if churches didn't marry LGBT couples and didn't put LGBTQ bathrooms and uh, take the tax exemption from Christian schools if they did not allow LGBTQ uh, teachers and then teach the LGBTQ curriculum. Yeah. Yeah, that's what they did. Trying to destroy religion, but they want to use the black church to make sure that they that people vote for the Democrat Party. Oh, yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll use the black church for that. They will applaud you at a football stadium if you are protesting your country and you kneel to protest your country. But these same groups of liberals and Democrats will put you in jail if you kneel at their stadium to pray to Jesus Christ. Yeah, a man had to take him to court, Supreme Court. They fired him for it. He won. Yeah, but they fired the man because he kneeled to pray to Jesus. Now, if he was kneeling like Kaepernick then was to hate America, they will have applauded him. They go to court almost every year to try to get in God we trust off the money to try to get in God we trust off of the courthouses, to keep prayer out of schools. And now look at the United States of America. We're one of the least religious countries in the world right now, and we're paying for it. Our second president and first vice president, John Adams, said that our constitution is designed for a religious a moral and religious people it is wholly inadequate for any other. Without religious upbringing, without religious instruction, we're going to kill one another because this country was not built to be a police state. We have too much freedom. We have too much access to one another. And this is why the teaching of Christianity is so important in America, that we learn to love one another, that we learn to give forbearance to one another, that thou should not kill, thou should not steal, thou should not commit adultery, thou should honor thy mother and thy father, thou should not envy or covet one another. The Democrats do not want you to learn these things because they want this country to implode. So they are anti-Christian party. And anyone that votes for this party is putting their soul at hazard. And you better think real hard before you pull the lever 
for Kamala Harris and Joe Biden this year, this, and these Kamala perverts, liars, psychopaths, and anti-Christian bigots. Now go to my website, VinceEllison.com. And when you go there, get my documentary on Iron Triangle. It talks about exactly what I'm talking about today. Can voting for the Democratic Party send your soul to hell? Get this documentary. It's one of the best documentaries you've ever seen. It'll knock your socks off. Go to my website. Get my newest book, Crime Inc. Hit number one. Came out October. It says that the Democratic Party is like a crime family. They use the same tactics as organized crime to get what they want. It explains all of it to you. Get Crime Inc. It hit number one three or four times on Amazon. Also, get 25 lies. I read some excerpts through today. It talks about the Democratic Party's most damnable, seductive lies, how to refute them. It educates you on why this party is so dangerous and how voting for it will put your soul at hazard. And the one that started it all, Iron Triangle, it talks about how most black preachers, most black politicians, and most black civil rights workers are just conduits between white liberals in the Democrat Party and the black community. These are your enemies. They are the Pharisees and the Sadducees of today. They think only about themselves and meditate on blood. When you can recognize who your true enemy is, that's when you can start living your free life the way you're supposed to. So go to BenceEllison.com. Check out this website. Learn. Educate yourself. I'm here to wake you up. Let you understand that the Democratic Party is going to lead your soul to hell. Don't go to hell for them. There's a better place. God has things in store for you that you cannot even imagine. Turn to Jesus Christ. Turn to your Bible. Don't let these people confuse you. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Read your Ten Commandments. Look at the seven virtues and the seven, and the seven vices and understand that you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve two masters. So our Bible tells us God told the children of Israel that heaven bear witness that I lay before you blessings and curses, life and death. Choose life so that you and your children shall live. So choose life. And join me again next week on the Vince Everett Ellison Show.